Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. And in this video, I want to tell you about our weekend trip to Chiha State Park. Chiha State Park is located in East Alabama, uh, inside the Talladega National Forest, about halfway between Birmingham, Alabama, and Atlanta, Georgia. It is situated on the top of the highest mountain in Alabama. Ava's family wanted to take a little vacation trip before their children went back to school, and so at the last minute we decided to come to Chiha State Park. Since we didn't have enough camping equipment for the entire family, or enough space to pack it in our cars, we decided to spend two nights at the State Park's Lodge. But Ava and I spent all day Saturday exploring the park's campgrounds and recreational opportunities. The first thing we did Saturday morning was to drive through the semi-primitive camping area. Although many of these campsites were small and lacked a shower nearby, Many did have water and electricity, and many had great views off the top of the mountain, and they were located near the central part of the park. This was my favorite campsite in the entire park, even though it did not have many trees for shade. Then we rode to campground number one with 43 developed campsites, but these sites are very rustic compared with sites in other parks. These sites have a fire ring and a concrete picnic table, which I don't particularly care for. A few sites had a pedestal grill instead of the fire ring. They also had water and electric hookups. This was one of several good tent sites on the back side of the campground loop. Most of the bathrooms in the park were old and rustic, but this bathroom was new. It had a spacious but institutional look to it. It had a couple of gender-neutral family showers on the back side of the building. Next, we rode down the mountain to campground number two. This campground has 30 developed sites, but they are also very rustic. In some respects, this may be the best of the two developed campgrounds in that it is very close to the beach and lake area. Near Campground 2 is a CCC primitive campground, but we did not get a chance to drive through it. About 9.30 in the morning, we got to the beach area, and little Lalo enjoyed getting into the water and playing with some of his water toys. The lake also had a diving platform and some paddle wheel boats, so the family decided to rent one and take a spin around the lake. Next to the lake was a nice picnic area and playground. At 10.30 in the morning, Ava and I left the family at the beach and drove up to the campfire ring near the tower, where we enjoyed a Camping 101 class taught by the park's naturalist, Mandy Pearson. I especially enjoyed seeing this old army pup tent, which is similar to the one that I spent many nights in about 50 years ago. I also enjoyed having the opportunity to set up this Coleman six-person sundome. And we also enjoyed talking with the park's manager, Callie Thornton, who shared some of her extensive knowledge about backpacking. While exploring the park Saturday morning, we noticed many old stone buildings and structures that were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps many years ago. The Bunker Observation Tower is the highest point in Alabama and houses a CCC museum. 
This beautiful little stone grotto is located along the scenic drive around the park. After our class, Ava and I met the family back at the hotel room where we ate a little lunch and took a nap. At 3 o'clock, we met the naturalist, Mandy Pearson, at the Bald Rock Trailhead and enjoyed a guided hike out to Bald Rock. During the hike, Mandy stopped several times to tell us a little bit about the park's history and about the plants in the area. We stayed on the elevated boardwalk, but many children enjoyed hiking along the rocky trail that went just below the boardwalk. At the end of the trail is an observation deck where you can see beautiful views of the surrounding area. But I was a little nervous to see so many people standing and sitting so close to the bluff edge. The park has several other trails, including the Penhody Trail that connects with the Appalachian Trail. After our hike, Ava and I toured the Walt Farr Indian Relic Museum. It had an impressive arrowhead collection and a collection of other Indian artifacts. Ava especially liked this serving spoon made from a gourd because it brought back many memories from her past. After touring the museum, Ava and I enjoyed relaxing at this observation point next to the Parks restaurant. After relaxing for a while in our room, Ava and I rode back to the campfire ring for another program by the park naturalist, Mandy Pearson, on the Leave No Trace guidelines. A pan fire. And a pan fire leaves very little of an impact as well. But something you can do even better than these two options is this. What is that? Any ideas? That is one of the most awesome stoves I have ever seen. It runs off of twigs and it generates enough power that it can recharge your phone. So if you want to keep something safe for emergencies, it can recharge your phone, it can recharge your lights, it can recharge a lot of things, um, and it just runs off of twigs. Sunday morning, we were awoken at 6 o'clock to a heavy thunderstorm with lots of fog, but the sun came out and the fog cleared by 9, and we packed up and headed home. Before concluding, let me share just a few observations. This park is a fun place to visit. It offers many activities from swimming and paddle boating and hiking, viewing civilian conservation corps structures, attending naturalist-led programs, and beautiful scenic views of the surrounding area but it is very remote and very rustic. The park store offers a few food items for sale, but if you can't find it there, you'll have to drive 15 miles down to the nearest store one way. The main area of the park has a manned entrance station that uh, identifies everybody that comes into the park and a gate that is locked at night. But Campground 2 and the primitive campground did not have such a station. Furthermore, we did not see any campground host in any of the campgrounds. We also noticed that some of the amenities in the campground needed to be repaired or replaced and noticed that several fire rings needed to be cleaned and trimmed. This fire ring was just laying on the ground in campground number 2. If you visit this park in July, be sure to bring your insect repellent. It has swarms of gnats that fly about your face and try to get into your eyes, nose, and mouth. And it also has lots of no see You can't see them, but they'll bite you and make you itch for several days. For more information about tent camping equipment, procedures, and destinations, please read my book, Basic Tent Camping.
visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping.